After our first night on the beach, a hearty breakfast by the fire, we head down to the beach. Massive swells hit the coastline here and forecast too for at least a week. It's so nice here in the ocean at night. So what does that mean for the creek? Now what that means in the creek is that the water can't get out. The surf's pushing in through the mouth and actually pushes water in instead of the tide going out. It keeps it high. This morning, day two, we're contemplating crossing. We really did want to head out and get a Christmas tree, but with the swell keeping the tide up at the crossing, we thought we'll see what it's like tomorrow. Look, three or four cars are gone before us. It's just a matter of finding that shallow path. It's a real quiet period up here, early December, before the influx of campers come in for Christmas. It's our favorite time. The tides are really high. We've got the full moons. Now these cars that have left, they've all been weekenders. So they've obviously got up really, really late or had a lot to pack up. Because for mind, these guys are crossing too deep. And check out this Prado. Look at the bubbles coming out That's of the exhaust. Huge, He's actually accelerating. Huge wave, you're gonna get wet. We had a few jobs to do back at camp. I had to blow up the rubber ducky, get all the bits and pieces out for it. Plus the kids have been hassling me for a rope swing. That's not usual. The rope on the tree. I'm not sure what he's doing. Okay, now he's with the drill. Dad, what are you doing? Custom does not fit. It's just, it's your rope swing. I'm drilling a hole through it so I can tie a knot and it gives you the perfect height. I'm gonna go see what Nicholas and Mum are doing. What is this for? First I find Dad drilling a hole into a wood, plus the string, and now I find Mum carrying a huge, humongous rock. Uh, do you want Dad? No? Okay. Alright. Mum's got power. Um, yeah. Too right, Nicholas. Mum does have power. Snake in the way. Look, go. Show us how it's really done. Dong's off. Oh, that's what I didn't do. Yoo-hoo! It's holding. Thanks, Brian, for the uh, Telstra rope. Is that fun? Mm, yep. Who put that up there? Hopefully a licensed rope swinging person. So all that's done now. Did somebody say lunch? It's funny, we thought this year we might not get that much use out of the rubber ducky. The kids are getting bigger, they'll probably want to be on the surf a lot more. But with the low that came through, the beach wasn't so nice. So we got to explore the creek system a lot more this time. This was probably our first year that we spent a bit of time at the rope swing. Did you hit anything? Ready? Wow! That looked like fun! Look at that! <laughs> it was awesome! That's crazy. The only thing is, I had the rope between my legs. I know, it would have wrapped your leg. That's not good. Jump. Three, two, two one. one, go! Yay! <laughs> Yay! Get the rope! Woo! That's awesome. Can you grab the rope, Mel? Oh! We found out later on that it was friends of ours years back that took a chainsaw to this rope swing and actually cut the footholes in all the way up that tree. Now believe you me, I was up there. The last thing that I'd want to be holding at that height is a chainsaw. That is going way up. That's going to send it. He's, I love watching that. He goes, Shoo! You right, Dan? Oh, Nicholas, careful. Ready? What do you say? Go. Yay! Yay! Oh! <laughs> that one hit oh. hard! <laughs> oh, God, yeah. You go that way, we go this way. We mind our own business. Good spot for a picnic just here, you think? Yeah. Junction of two. After two five hours. hours. Oh, it wasn't that long. Do we call it Rob's Corner? Rob's Corner. Afternoon tea, crackers and cheese, happy hour. And we found some wood. So we'll have some firewood to take back with us. Not being able to cross the creek, we've only got a lot of hardwood that we brought over, but not a lot of stuff to keep it going. It's also starting to rise the water. 
We got to see something really cool and special on the way back. The eagles that are around here, I've always loved them. But we actually saw one with probably a foot long fish in its claws flying in the sky. So we were able to follow it to its tree. Now this animal spent at least half an hour trying to find a place to land and then when the eagle did to try and kill the prey that it had to have a feed. Meanwhile, the kids spotted a couple of other eagles in a couple of trees down, which we just assumed were its family and waiting for a feed. The eagle did have a couple of goes at it to make sure that it still wasn't flapping. And then once the eagle took off, it got hit by what we thought were friends, but no, they wanted the food. And for the kids, seeing that firsthand in real life, better than any TV show. So we'd allocated one day on this trip of the 17 days for the kids to try and catch us dinner. Now after seeing that eagle and the rods were in the boat, the kids wanted to spend that couple of hours today. That's a good fish, that's a brim. Hello. On our way back. It's home time now. Off to get the fire going so I can cook up some fish and chips. Hold on. Get back here with that beer. All right, show us how it's done before we start eating into this wood. There's a massive gap there. How do you actually bridge that? Oh, with numbers. Oh, nice drive. It's a cool truck, this. This is the RC four-wheel drive C2X. Big drop here. And you got the giant flex. All right, let's oh, nice. Oh, and then the big crisscross at the end. You're not going to make this. Wow, look at that flex. I wish Bullet had that flex. Now that we can get some of this wood on the fire, best thing about pine. Not only can you cut it to length with a handsaw, but it splits real good. That was easy. So those of us lucky enough to have catch cans makes a very, very handy fire lighter. Kids, thanks for dinner. Tasted awesome. Well done. What a great day. So will tomorrow be the day the tide's low enough to go and get that Christmas tree. Paddle pot for dessert, anyone? Come on, Millie. Really? What? He tested it. It should work then. So I spent about 20, 30 minutes together with Shell scouting out this line to get across. So it looks like the previous couple of days of that surf coming in into this corner, that the lines actually changed. The first entry point that we would normally take is quite deep. The surfs actually move the sand underneath it. So we ride the bank along the bottom of the dune to as far as we can before we feel the cars on too big an angle and then turn in. And it seems shallow there. Now that's the line for today. We finally made it across, trying to cross for two or three days. And we, what, what I think is we need to be crossing again in 20 minutes. So we've done a rubbish run. We're gonna find the first Christmas tree outside of National Park and get back. Do you accept the challenge? Challenge accepted. Now you reckon that I only just touched the freewheeling hub on that crossing. So we think we're in that stagnant 20 minute period where it's starting to turn. This is one of the spots we got them years gone by. Oh, oh, no! What do you mean, huh? This is where we got them. Did you see? Maybe you should oh, film this, this bit. This is crazy. Oh my goodness. Brand new husky. I've, I've had these huskies, the 120s, all my life. Instead of the plastic unscrew now, you tighten the chain. Oh, this one! With nuts and bolts. This one's This one, Get it pull that way. Is that? Make sure it pulls that way. Car, Dan. My call was it was going to fall that way, but it's pushing a big southerly's pushing and it, it pushed the opposite way. But 
Doesn't matter, we've got to turn this car around, get over the bumpy bumps and get across the creek. Let's go. On our way back, we were very lucky to see this pair of Brumbies. We saw droppings all up the road that we just come off. Such an elusive animal, but here at peace, even though we were only five meters away. They're beautiful. Look how healthy they look and muscly. Oh, mm, she's, she's a bit brown. Now I feel that we probably spent about 15 to 18 minutes too long getting back. The five or so minutes looking at the Brumbies, the rubbish stop. So this tide is probably about 70 mil higher than what I would have liked. I don't know Dan. You gotta just do your own thing. Twenty minutes earlier and there was probably thirty mil less water in it. Turn this way. So this low tide time on this particular holiday for people. That's your check-in time. Now, if you're traveling from afar and you have every intention of being at the low tide on the dot, things change. You get held up in traffic, a fuel stop. Kids need to stop for food, water, toilet stops. It all makes a bit of a difference when you get onto the beach and then you eventually get to this crossing. And when you're late, you do take in that little bit more salt water than you may have wanted. We, when coming up here, I always allow an hour. So I'll, I'll pick an hour before the best time to cross. And I'd rather be waiting to cross for 20 or so minutes rather than be late. And you know what, that hour's leeway, we normally eat that up in any case. talking to one of the chaps that's just come in from the top of the territory apparently they were having a bit of a blitz on DPFs and all they were doing was pulling cars over breath testing and touching the inside of the tailpipe if it was black it was DPF delete and depending on the model I guess of your vehicle if you were supposed to have a DPF and you had a black tailpipe you were in trouble dad for the second time what are you doing yeah, big priority we went in deep, we didn't touch a chassis, but we've got to put at least 20 litres of water on the brakes, the hubs, the leaf springs, the locker, the locker motor, the locker motor went under. Got to get down in there. Anytime we cross, we wash. The people that come here often, have these weed sprayers in their truck and it's basically just to put a bit of fresh water on some of those vulnerable spots like your calipers and even your discs just to get that salt water off even though you try not to cross high and you try not to go fast teamwork because it's a two-man job no sorry a two-hand job lovely assistant yeah lovely assistant somebody say lunch before we offload this tree we're gonna have some lunch hey dad 
Mum's got a challenge for you. A challenge? Yes. What do I have to drive? It's not driving. Oh. We're cooking lunch, remember? Yeah. I'm Mexican Breville. It's not a Breville. I do Breville's like that. It's a wrap. A Mexican wrap Breville. You ready? Wrap, 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 wrap. But it doesn't, oh, it doesn't close properly. Something? I'm the chef. It looks good. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm the chef. Oh, no, you made him smaller. No, he's all good. Oh, it's like a pastry chef restaurant. It should work. Oh, we need a knife or something. Have you got another little bit of bread to put just no, here? No. You're right with that? Yeah. You want the spoon? Push it in. You want the spoon? Mm -hmm. Don't break your fingers. All right. Right, just put it on. Let's see how it goes. It should be right, it's just a little bit, it's probably not as thick as the Breville likes as far as filling, but we'll get there. Right. Pressure's on. I've looked after it like it's a newborn baby. Have a look at that. It's some kind of Mexican falafel, fajita. I don't know, I feel like I'm a pastry chef now. Have a look at that. Is this clean and happy? It's perfect. Never done one before, you can start doing them. $4.50. Put a comment down below. So which way you want to do this? Got it. Alright, walk it towards the ocean. Yeah. Alright, put it down. Yeah. We really should have chosen it's a big the tree. I th I was just about to say we really should have chosen it? the yeah. smaller tree. Yeah. Why did we pick such a small tree? It needs to come towards me a little bit. Okay. Well done, family. That's big. Tree decorating. The kids yeah. have got their mini tree, and mum's got her big tree. Well, her three foot ladder, you've got to be careful there. Oh, she's actually going to be doing some. Phew! Nice, Yasu. <laughs> Lassoing. I want to see how you get the star on. Spag bowl on the gas and the spaghetti cooking on the fire. Awesome. Showers. The old truck had the twine. This truck, we don't have that. So we're boiling water into a bucket. Now that's really warm. And running it off the old school 12 volt shower pumps. Still doing the same trick, washing us, keeping us warm. A little bit of work, yes. Warming up the water, but with the abundance of wood and time, it's been all good. For Shell and I, cooking when we're camping is a very big thing. Now she goes and makes an itinerary of the days and the meals that we'll have up here. And she does it spot on. Being remote like this, and knowing each day's meals, having that food ready and semi-prepared, it's a big credit to her. She uses the two fridges and the food's expiry dates, so great. We've always got fresh food and great meat. It's a lot of fun cooking her itinerary and the family really enjoys eating it also. We're like 15 days in here and we're still cooking gourmet meals like this. Please join us in the next episode. We show you what it takes to get this Ford out of the creek. Cooking our damper and we'll reveal the secret recipe. And there's a bit of a story too regarding these dog prints. And as always, thanks for watching. Oh.